communism around the world. Right, well, communism had been um, thought up, teamed up by Karl Marx in the 1800s. Um, that's when it was conceived. When it was born, it was in the 1917 revolution, the first time a country had become a communist country. Um, scary for those capitalist countries because they believed it would spread and become a um, threat to their liberties and their freedom um, and they were right to be scared because that is what the communists actually wanted a worldwide revolution communism is only ever any good if all the countries in the world are communist so they um, set up the communists an international organization called Comintern uh, which had you know had predecessors um, before it but this is the first one after uh, the revolution and that was set up in 1919 to try and enable a spread of communism around the world through revolution and all sorts of communist groups throughout the world were um, invited to attend its conferences communist parties in the different countries but also um, st uh, shop stewards unions and other trade unions anybody who was um, a socialist well left wing and um, a radical uh, who was interested in revolution so the uh, Comintern was headed by uh, Gregory Zinoviev and um, he was famous for sending uh, a letter to Britain even though that has now been proved to be fake um, he was supposed to be calling for a sedition and revolution for British workers in 1924 so there are four main periods of Comintern uh, the first one was the um, after the, the revolution during the Civil War to prepare for revolutions throughout the world um, and they tried to export the revolution including uh, the Spartacus revolution and uh, Hun Hungarian revolution and a revolution in Estonia as well all of which failed so by 1925 they decided to concentrate um, on communism in Russia so the Comintern were a little bit less active and um, Lenin's dead and Stalin is making sure he's consolidating his power at home um, so it's less radical until 1928 so that's 1925 to 1928 the second period 1928 1929 um, there's a third period uh, which lasts till 1935 and that's the um, the highly radical period where any other party other than communists even if they're left wing even if they're socialists even if they have a lot in common with some of the beliefs of communists they were uh, not to be trusted not to be entered into an alliance with they were social fascists and they were just as bad as your normal Covenant Garden fascists um, so the um, communists were quite uh, isolated there they, they did not make any alliances until the rise of Hitler and once Hitler had become um, leader of Germany as a, a fascist chancellor and um, they got a little bit more worried. Mussolini had obviously been fascist for quite a while but Germany's closer to Russia and um, it's a, obviously a spread of communi of fascism that they need to do something about so they do a, a turn, an about turn and so the fourth period is also called the Popular Front where they agree and encourage communist groups around the world to make alliances to join up with other socialist groups and any anti-fascist group really um, anybody who opposed fascists to make this popular front now there are two countries where this actually worked and there were enough left-wing um, voters to elect a popular front government in both Spain in 1935 under Manuel Azania and also in France in 1936 under Leon Blum um, both of which were termed popular front governments